Second Samuel chapter number 13. We're working our way through Second Samuel on Sunday evenings, and I love preaching on these characters and story. There's an emphasis in this passage of Scripture on a friend. As a matter of fact, one of David's sons, Amnon, has a really bad friend. And I'm going to preach tonight this message titled, The Power of a Friend. The Power of a Friend. And I hope that all of us will listen up. Now, I know the tendency. Uh, this passage of Scripture has been preached many, many, many times in teen meetings and youth uh, groups. And I think that's very appropriate. But I'll have you know that at any and every age and stage of our lives, our friends and acquaintance and the people that we allow to influence our lives uh, are of utmost importance. We need to pay close attention to it. You need to make sure that you uh, have the right friends because you are or you soon shall be what your friends are. Now let's read together Second Samuel chapter number 13. The Bible says this in verse 1. And it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. And Amnon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, and Jonadab was a very subtle man. And he said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Wilt thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat. And dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come and make me a couple of cakes in my sight, that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tamar, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him Meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house, and he was laid down. And she took flour and kneaded it, and made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan and poured them out before him. But he refused to eat. And Amnon said, "Have all the men out. Have out all men from me." And they went out, every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, "Bring the meat into the chamber that I may eat of thine hand." And Tamar took the cakes which she had made and brought them into the chamber to Amnon her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. And she answered him, Nay, my brother, do not force me, for no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Do not thou, do not thou this folly. And I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. Now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king, for he will not withhold me from thee, howbeit he would not hearken unto her voice. But being stronger than she, forced her and lay with her. Verse 15, Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. And she said unto him, There is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he would not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him and said, Put now this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. And she had a garment of diverse colors upon her. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her. And Tamar put ashes on her head and rent her garments of diverse colors that was on her and laid her hand on her head and went on crying. And Absalom, her brother, said unto her, Hath Amnon thy brother been with thee? Behold now thy peace, but, but hold now thy peace, my sister." He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tamar remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. And we'll quit reading right there. And 
I want to take time to look at this passage through this story and remind you of the power of a friend. The power of a friend. When we come to this passage of Scripture, we meet some of the main characters. And, of course, the main character, uh, as we begin, is this man named Amnon. It's important to know who Amnon is. Amnon is actually the eldest son of David. He is the crown prince of the nation of Israel. If anything happens to David, Amnon is next in line to the throne of Israel. Amnon is a privileged young man. Amnon is a blessed young man. Amnon is the kind of guy that has all kinds of opportunity. And as as the son of the king of Israel, he is a very spoiled person, as we'll begin to see pretty soon. Amnon. Amnon's brothers uh, are Absalom and Adonijah. We know later in the story of the life of David that Absalom, as the crown prince of Israel, rebels against David, his father, and tries to be king and ends up losing his life. But we have Amnon, we have Absalom. In this passage of scripture, we have a man named Jonadab. The Bible says that Jonadab is a subtle man. He is the friend. He's like the first cousin. So David has a brother, and Jonadab is David's brother's boy. And Jonadab is a subtle man. He is sneaky. He's a cheat. And the Bible says that Jonadab was Amnon's friend. It was Amnon's friend. We meet up with Tamar. It's an interesting uh, connection here. Tamar is actually Absalom's full sister. Absalom and Tamar had the same mom, the same dad. David was their dad, and they had the same mother. Amnon is a half-brother. So David is his father. He has a different mother, and Amnon has become infatuated with his half-sister Tamar because she's beautiful. The story goes, and I'll tell it briefly, that Amnon is so infatuated with his sister, and he's so smitten with her beauty, and he'd like to marry her, but he doesn't know how, and he doesn't see how it could be right, and he was right thinking it couldn't be right. But he had a friend. And Amnon, being the subtle kind and the wicked friend that no one needs to have at Jonadab says hey look I've got a plan here's the plan what you need to do is you need to fake like you're sick all right you fake like you're sick and when your dad comes by and checks on you you fake like you're sick and you just tell your dad that that you're awful sick and you need Somebody to help take care of you. How about sending me, oh, let me think, one of my sisters. Why don't you, why don't you send me Tamar to help take care of me and feed me? And he says, and when she's there in your chambers, you send the men away and you can do whatever you want to with her. What a wicked friend. What wicked counsel. But I'll just tell you. The power of a friend. Amnon falls for the trap and follows through. And does exactly as the plan was laid out for him. He invites, has his father invite his sister to come and feed him bread, sends him out, takes advantage of her, and literally in a moment's time ruins this poor, precious lady, Tamar's life. Not only does he ruin her life, but he also ruins his own life. And in the middle of all this, we see one thing that is causing all the trouble, one thing that leads to all the grief, one person that really is the person on which all the grief and all the trouble hinges. And it's a friend. It's the wrong kind of friend. It's the wrong kind of influence. It's the wrong kind of person in the life of Amnon, a man of great promise. Amnon, the Bible says, had a friend whose name was Jonadab. And there's probably not a more devastating sentence in the scripture. Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. And, and I wonder, I could put my name in that list. If I'm allowing someone that's wicked and sinful to have a prominent place in my decision making and Playing the role of a friend in my life who does not love the Lord, who does not counsel rightly. I could say Cody had a friend whose name was. 
And you could say your name had a friend whose name was. And I want you to know, if you say your name had a friend whose name was, and that name is not the kind of person who's pointing you to Jesus, the kind of person who's encouraging you in righteousness, is not the kind of person who's wanting you to do the best for the glory of God in your life. You have a friend that's going to lead you in the wrong way. Immediately we have these thoughts like, well, I'm trying to win them to the Lord. Let me just tell you something. You don't have to win them to the Lord being like them. You don't have to win them to the Lord following their counsel. And I'm just going to tell you, a friend is a powerful thing for both good and bad. And in Amnon's life, the power of a friend, not only did it ruin his life, but it ruined Tamar's life. And it caused a stink in the house of David and the nation of Israel that we're talking about thousands of years later on a Sunday night in Chilhowee, Virginia. I just want to remind you of the power of a friend. The power of a friend. Let's look at our text tonight and consider this number one, Amnon's temptation. The first couple of verses, here's what the Bible says. Chapter 13, verse number 1, the Bible says, It came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Now, this is an interesting thing. And I know that it seems very uh, backwoods and very uh, weird that a guy would have a crush on his sister. And I do not recommend that, just so you know. But he's got a crush on his sister. She's beautiful. She's a virgin. She's a, uh, the kind of person. And we'll see here in a minute that Tamar's the kind of person that's got a lot of sense about her. And Amnon had a little bit of sense thinking, I really like Tamar because you can see here in a minute, Tamar had her head screwed on straight. She, he's infatuated with his sister. The Bible says in verse 2 that Amnon was so vexed he was so smitten. He was so infatuated. He was so head over heels in love and yearning in his soul to have a relationship with his sister that he fell sick. He was just sick. He wanted something so bad. He was sick over it. But I'll just have you know something. It was not the right thing. He fell sick for his sister. Tamar, for she was a virgin. And look at the last phrase, verse number two. And Amnon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. So we see here the temptation is played out there. Amnon has set his affection on something that he shouldn't have and couldn't get righteously, right? Amnon set his affection on something that was forbidden of him. Amnon has set his affection on something that has interest him, but it's not the right thing to do. Have you ever been there? Let me tell you something. It doesn't go away after the teen years. It doesn't go away after the children's years. There's always in all of our lives things that we want and our flesh desires that is forbidden by God. Immediately think of things that are sexual and impure in that world but I'll just have you know something anything that you yearn for long for and is, are willing to sin in order to get is something that is tempting you away from your spirit with God it may be a business deal it may be the the thrill of of telling the story of the gossip it may be the uh burden to do something wrong wicked sinful but it's not necessarily just something that is of sexual perversion. But Amnon was tempted. The Bible says we're all tempted, right? Amnon was tempted. Maybe you're tempted to hold a grudge, tempted to. Now, let me tell you something about temptation. Temptation is everywhere. How many of you have been tempted to do something wrong this week? Would you just let me know so we can thank you very much? I'm not alone. Hallelujah. Isn't it good to go to church with a bunch of humans? Now, don't forget that you're going to church with a bunch of humans, okay? Because that means along the way you're going to have to forgive the people that you sit in the pews with. We're a bunch of humans. We're a bunch of flesh. We're a bunch of 
sinners, saved by grace, but sinners. We've all been tempted. Now, let me tell you something about temptation. Temptation in itself is not sin. It's when you're tempted and you follow through with the temptation, that's when it becomes sin and you begin to make your way down the path of destruction that Amnon goes on. But at this moment in Amnon's life, he is vexed and it's weird. He's vexed in love with his sister. That's strange. He's vexed in love with his sister. It's not right. As a matter of fact, he's even said in his heart, at the end of verse number two, he says, I mean... Here's how I feel, but there's nothing I can do about it. And I say, you're right, Amnon. You know what I like to tell Amnon? Look here, buddy. Get over it. You know what a good friend would say to Amnon? Amnon, you are sick and twisted. You need to stop all that mess and move on. That ain't right. You know what a good friend does? A good friend doesn't tell you things that tickles your ears. The Bible says faithful are the wounds of a friend. But the kisses of an enemy are deceit. A good friend will tell you the truth. A good friend will be straight with you. A good friend will make sense out of something and help you when you have a moment where you're thinking about something really ridiculous and say, whoa, you're not even close to right. That's a good friend. But Amnon had a friend, and when Amnon was tempted, instead of looking to the righteous and looking to the right kind of counsel, instead of looking to the Word of God, to the purse of God, to ration and reason, instead of looking to something that made sense, you know what Amnon did? Amnon had a friend. Amnon's temptation moves and leads us to Amnon's friend, The Bible says in verse number 3, but Amnon had thought it hard for him to do that. Amnon thought, I just don't think there's anything I can do about this. I'm just going to have to get over it. But, verse number 3, Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. Let me tell you about a subtle man. Now, Jonadab was crafty, not like making stuff he saw on Pinterest crafty. He was a sneaker. He was sneaky. I've got to tell you my favorite thing about crafting. This is my favorite favorite thing about crafting. And I I love this sign and thought. It says, all you crafters, you're going to hate me for this. But I can't refrain. My friend made me do it. (laughs) Why buy it for $9 when you can buy $90 worth of crafting supplies and make it yourself? Isn't that right? Yeah. Now... Don't get this wrong because Jonadab was not crafty like making stuff. He was crafty. He was a sneaker. He was a cheat. He was a liar. He was the kind of guy that in order to get whatever he wanted, he'd do whatever he had to do. It reminds me of an episode of Andy Griffith. You know we're really digging deep when we're thinking about an episode of Andy Griffith. You remember the episode of Andy Griffith when the little boy, he's just a brat, and he's figured out if he'll throw a fit and cry and scream, his daddy will get him anything he wants. And Opie's like, hmm. I like the way this works. Let me tell you, the little kid that cried and finally at the end of the episode gets his hind end wore out. Hallelujah. And everybody said amen at the conclusion of that one. The little kid that puts on a show and will lie and cheat and cry and hurt anybody around him in order to get what he wants, that's what kind of guy Jonadab was. And let me tell you something. There were Jonadab's In David's time and around the palace of King David, there have been Jonadabs in every culture, in every race, and there's Jonadabs around here right now. So be warned and beware that if you have a friend who fits into the category of crafty, you probably don't need to take their advice. You need to invite them to church and sit with them at youth group maybe, but don't do anything else. Crafty. Jonadab was crafty. Jonadab, he didn't care about Amnon. Jonadab didn't care about the truth. Jonadab didn't care about anybody but Jonadab. 
And when it came to giving counsel, he'd looked at the life of Amnon. And he thought, I'll tell you one thing. If I was the crown prince of Israel and I was an Amnon, I'd have anything I want anytime I wanted. And as soon as he confided, as soon as uh, Jonadab, as soon as Amnon confided in Jonadab, Jonadab said, well, I'll tell you what I'd do. I'd lie to my dad. I'd lie to my servants. I'd lie to the girl, Tamar. And I'd get what I wanted, whatever it took to get it. And Amnon, who had resolved to just, you know, let it go, he had a friend. He had a friend. He was subtle. He was crafty. Here's some other things that he has to say. Amnon's friend, Jonadab. The Bible says in verse number 4, Jonadab said unto him, Why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day? Why are you sad? Will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tamar, my brother, Absalom's sister. Let me just park there for just a second and let you know something. I don't know why it is, but it's in all of our flesh when we're emotional and upset and troubled or vexed like Amnon was to spill our guts. But it just so happens we have this tendency to spill our guts to somebody that is unreliable. Have you ever noticed that? Have you ever done that in your own life? I mean, you, you get aggravated, you get upset, and the next thing you know, you're talking to some person that has zero character about the most intimate things in your life, and you're confiding in somebody that is not faithful, that is not good. Let me tell you something. That is a weakness of the flesh. It's a tool of Satan, and don't fall into that trap. We joke about what we tell our barbers. We joke about what we tell the hairdresser. We joke about what we tell folks that we just don't know. And in this setting, I'll just tell you, Amnon, if he had any sense at all, would have never told a crafty, subtle, sinful, wicked person like Jonadab, even if he was his cousin and his friend, the most intimate details of his heart. Be careful who you confide in. The Bible says in Proverbs 25, 19, confidence in an unfaithful man in time of trouble is like a broken tooth and a foot out of joint. If you've ever experienced either of those, a broken tooth or a foot out of joint, you know it's a real pain. And I'll just tell you, you cause yourself great grief if you put your confidence in unfaithful people. His friend, he was subtle, crafty, The Bible says in verse number 5, Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. What's the first thing Jonadab does? The first part of Jonadab's plan to Amnon was, Hey, lie. Tell a lie. You don't have to tell the truth all the time. It's a little white lie. Let me tell you something about little white lies. And I watch Christian people tell white lies and it breaks my heart. Let me tell you something about white lies. White, little white lies. You, you call it a little white lie. Let me tell you, it's black as, black as the charred walls of hell in the eyes of a righteous God. God's people are not to bear false witness. Tell the truth. And by the way, if you have someone you call a friend that you know has a proclivity to lie, don't take counsel from them. Avoid that. They're not friends. He said, make thyself sick. And when thy father cometh to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come and give me meat and dress the meat in my sight so that I may see it and eat it at her hand. He's no friend. He's no friend. Amnon's friend was no friend at all. Amnon's temptation, Amnon's friend. Number three, Amnon's sin. Amnon's sin. Now this is an interesting thing about Amnon's Friend, let me just tell you a little something about Amnon's friend. So let's just take the start of the story full scale. You know the the end of the story now. Let's take the story full scale, and let me show you what this great friend Jonadab does. Jonadab counsels Amnon to ruin his life. Amnon follows through with the plan. Two years later, Amnon is invited. To the house of his brother Absalom. Absalom for two years hasn't spoken to him. Absalom has a plan, has commissioned his servants. He says to his servants, When you catch Absalom drunk, and when you catch uh, my brother Amnon drunk, you kill him. You know what happens? They do. 
Somehow, in the mix, there's several miles journey from where Absalom is living back to the king's palace. And somehow, the news had traveled from Absalom's house back to King David that all of his sons, Absalom had killed all of his sons. But somehow, the friend, Jonadab, this precious friend, Jonadab, who only cares about what Amnon gets, he comes back on the scene and he speaks to the king. I'll just read it to you. Look at it within verse 32 of this chapter. The Bible says, Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, verse 32, answered and said, Let not my Lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's son, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this hath been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. Now therefore, let not my lord the king take the thing take the thing to his heart to think that all the king's sons are dead for Amnon only is dead. Let me tell you, you see what Jonadab does? You see Jonadab, he is so upset because he had led Amnon. No, there's not a bit of pity in his heart at all. All that Jonadab has to say to the king is he tells the king, he says, I can see, now listen here, King David, don't, don't let this go to your heart. It's just Amnon. It's just Amnon. It's not all your, it's just Am. What kind of friend do you think that is? I'll tell you, a friend that will encourage you to lie in order to get your way will not be the friend who has your back when things aren't going your way. You remember that. You know who your true friends are? Your true friends are the ones that will be there when you're up, that will be there when you're down. Your true friends are the ones that will love you when you're doing the right thing and the ones that will visit you in jail. But it seems so hard for so many people to realize and understand what a real friend is. I'll just tell you something. Joan Dad was not a friend. And by the way, anyone that encourages you to do the wrong thing is no friend at all. If you have a friend that's encouraging you to have illicit affairs against your spouse, that's no friend. If you have a friend that's encouraging you to stay away from God and God's house and God's word and God's people, that's no friend. If you have a friend that's encouraging you to do anything that's contrary to God's word, that is not a friend. If you think that's a friend, you're wrong. And you'll find the end of an unfaithful friend is heartache and grief and even often death. I'm just telling you, the power of a friend. Number three, Amnon's sin. Verse number six. The Bible says, so Amnon lay down, made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, Amnon said unto the king, I pray thee, let Tamar, my sister, come. He follows through with the plan. David says, all right, that's fine, whatever. The Bible says, verse right, so Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house he was laid down. She took flour, kneaded it, made cakes in his sight, and did bake the cakes. She took a pan, poured them out before him, but he refused to eat. And Amnon said, have out all men from me. Now, at this moment, I always read this, and I've read it so many times. I always read this, and I think, oh, my lands, Tamar, run for your life. Let me tell you something. Even a person of power, they put you in a spot where you feel uncomfortable, run for the hills. Run. I always want Tamar to run. She doesn't. The Bible says in verse 11 that when she would brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her and said unto her, Come lie with me, my sister. Now, I want you to see how bright Tamar is. She's precious. I, it breaks my heart. And just let me tell you something. If you have the wrong friend and you follow the lust of your flesh, not only does it hurt you, but it hurts other precious people along the way. And Tamar breaks my heart because Amnon and Jonadab, they ruined this precious girl's life. I want you to see how bright she is. The Bible says in verse 12, she answered him, No, nay, my brother, do not force me. No, 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 no. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel. Why does she mention Israel? I'll just tell you, she mentions Israel because she's thinking about God. This is not the right thing for God's people to do. I pray that as you're tempted to sin, I pray the Holy Spirit will remind you that you are a child of the Most High God and this is not something that God's children should partake in. 
She's thinking, whoa, this shouldn't be done in Israel. She says, do not thou this folly. Don't do it. This is foolish. I love it when someone has enough courage to call something what it is. She says, this is foolish. And it certainly was. Verse 13, she continues. She says, and I, whither shall I cause my shame to go? She says, look, if you do this to me, the shame will last my whole life. And it did. And he says, and she says, it's not just about me. She says, and as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. How many times, how many times has the counsel of an unfaithful friend led to sinful behavior that ended up in ruining someone's reputation? That ended up in ruining someone's future. And if it didn't ruin it, and sometimes, and I'll just tell you, I'm thankful for grace and forgiveness after a fall. But if it didn't ruin it, it always leaves a little blight and a little hint of rottenness. And this precious girl, she says, she says, and as for you, she says, you'll be like one of the fools in Israel. Verse 13, now therefore I pray thee, speak unto the king. He will not withhold me. There's a righteous way to go about this. How be it? Verse 14, he would not hearken unto her voice. I want you to pay attention to verse 14. How be it? He would not hearken unto her voice. You know what? He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. Let me tell you something. We blame a lot on Jonadab, but Amnon ultimately is the guilty party. And there's something you need to pay attention to in Amnon's life. Amnon would listen to Jonadab. He would listen to somebody that told him what he wanted to hear. Have you ever been around somebody that tell you what they want to hear? Someone that'll that'll butter you up. And I don't, I'm just going to be frank with you. It feels pretty good. Somebody tells you how good you are, how sweet you are, how precious you are, and you know all along they don't have it right, but it feels good. Sounds, I got this person duped. No, that person's got you duped, and you're the fool. And we have here in this situation, we have Amnon. He will listen, and he will follow the instructions of an unfaithful friend. But when Tamar, the girl whose life he's about to ruin, gives him very sound advice, the Bible says he would not hearken Unto her voice. Let me tell you. A sign that your heart is cold towards God. Is when you will listen to the voice of the world. But you will not listen to the voice of reason and godliness. When you will listen to someone that is rotten and cold and cynical and crafty. But you will not listen to someone who's interested in what God has to say. And God's will and what's right and righteous. His sin. He wouldn't listen. He wouldn't listen. He would not hearken unto her voice. Again, in verse 16, the last phrase, he would not hearken unto her voice. What happened? His sin. So Amnon follows through with his friend Jonadab's plan. He takes advantage in a very awful way. Tamar gets what he wants. He gets what in verses 1 and 2 had vexed his soul. He gets the girl. And so after he gets the girl and the lust of his flesh is fulfilled, shouldn't the next line be, and they lived happily ever after. And he was thoroughly satisfied because he fulfilled the lust of his flesh that one time and everything was great the rest of his life. No, you know the devil fools us to think, if I could get this one thing, everything else would be great forever. That is a lie from the pits of hell. There's only one thing, one person, Jesus Christ, that can satisfy you. If I could get that, and I'll do whatever it takes to get it, then it's going to be happily ever after. No, as soon as he took advantage of Tamar, who had vexed him, who he was madly in love over, what's the next thing? What happens? Verse 15. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. 
The last thing we ever hear Amnon say is, to Tamar, get out of here. Arise, be gone. He never speaks another word in all of God's word. He hates her. Sin. Sin. Folks, the devil tells us, if you get this, ooh, it's going to be good. But if you get it in the wrong way, and a bad friend says, if you can experience this, if you can do that, if you can have this, if you can smoke that, or you can drink that, or you can have this lust of the flesh fulfilled, then you're going to be happy, happy, happy. No, you're not. The end was the fact that she hated it. Have you ever got something sinfully? And as soon as you got it, immediately you had the same emotion that you hated it. How many of you Christian people can testify there's been a moment in your life where you got something, you got it the wrong way, as soon as you got it, you hated it? How many of you are like that? I'm, the reason I ask you to, to, to engage is because I think there's young people around you watching. I think there's other Christian people around you watching that need to know that this is real. How many of you have been there and you said, hey, look, I went and got what I wanted. I got it the wrong way. And when I got it, the end of it, I hated what I'd got. If that's you, would you raise your hand to me too? Look around, folks. It's good. As my mother has preached to me many, many times, you can learn the easy way or you can learn the hard way. The easy way is to pay attention and take the advice that comes from heaven and comes from godly people and stay away from sin and you won't have to experience that for yourself. Or you can learn the hard way. And you can take the counsel of a bad friend. And you can experience the emotion, the hatred, and the bitter end of what sin does. Amnon's end is our last part, last point. It's terrible. We don't ever hear him speak again. Absalom immediately finds out what's happened and what he's done to his sister and plots in his heart to kill him. For two years, Absalom doesn't say, doesn't speak to him, good or bad, for two years. And at the end of two years' time, Absalom, when the dust has settled, sets him up. And Amnon's dead. His life's over. Why? Over seconds of pleasure. And it all started and it all hinged on that little phrase, but Amnon had a friend. Hey, listen, just be careful you let influence your life. Here's another one. Parents, we, all, we have every right to manage who our kids hang out with. We do. You can ask my boys. I ask them all the time who they want to do something. I say, that's fine. Who are you with? Who are you with? We need to make sure not only are we around good friends, we also need to make sure we are good friends. It's so important. So important. May God help us. The power of a friend. Uh, don't let your acquaintance ruin your life.